Okay, I think we've got most people are in now. So welcome everybody to the Future of Mining Challenge webinar. Uh, this is a challenge that is being uh, run by Foresight on behalf of Wheat and Precious Metals. Uh, and if we can get the next slide, please. So first off, I want to acknowledge uh, that uh, personally, I'm on the lands of the uh, Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations, and uh, all of us across Canada are on uh, the uh, traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of uh, numerous First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. Uh, and we uh, work on these lands uh, with uh, gratitude and respect. Next slide, please. Today, uh, we're, we'll start with uh, some welcome remarks. And then, uh, importantly, we're going to learn about wheat and precious metals, uh, uh, who are the ones who are uh, running this challenge, who, who are looking for some cool new technologies. Uh, then we'll do a quick overview of the challenge itself. Uh, importantly, we will look at the eligibility and evaluation criteria. Uh, and a couple of tips on how you're most likely to actually succeed in this and then there will be uh, lots of time for Q&A so if you've got questions there is a Q&A box down at the bottom of your screen feel free to type in questions there uh, easy ones will be answered online and the more challenging ones we will uh, handle uh, in person next slide please so there are going to be three of us speaking to you over the course of this webinar. Myself, I'm the COO at Foresight. And then of far more significance, we have Randy Smallwood here, the president and CEO of Wheaton Precious Metals, and also Patrick Druin, who is uh, president of Wheaton International and their chief sustainability officer. Next slide. Uh, so at Foresight, so our mission is to connect industry with the world's best technologies. Uh, how do we do that? We do that through a number of uh, means. One of them is the Innovation Challenge uh, platform, which you are uh, actively uh, watching and participating in right now. Uh, we do other things as well. We do innovation scouting. We do research projects for industry. The whole point of this, though, is to accelerate the adoption and catalyze that the adoption of clean technologies. Uh, a lot of people know us as an accelerator and we are an accelerator. We are the largest clean tech accelerator in the country. Uh, but we realized a number of years ago that there's no point in accelerating clean technology if there isn't a customer. Uh, so we're working with industry to help them find those technologies and become the customers. Uh, so, speaking of customers, uh, Wheat and Precious Metals, I will hand it over to Randy to speak, uh, uh, but I, by way, means of introduction, Wheaton are really, they're a, a one of a kind, they're a first of a kind, they're doing some really, really cool things uh, if you follow the mining sector. Uh, and I'm really excited to to be able to introduce you, the, the man who started it, uh, Randy Smallwood. Well, thank you, David, and thank you, everyone, for uh, for joining us here uh, this morning um, or this afternoon, depending where you're dialing in from, perhaps even this evening. Um, anyways, um, you know, uh, I'm part of the team that actually came, came together 20 years ago. Uh, Wheaton is celebrating its 20th year in the streaming business. And uh, streaming is... Um, is, is a bit different in the sense that we don't actually operate mines, but we invest into mines and we take, uh, you know, we take pride or, we, you know, we take part of the responsibility or part of the success. And, and you know, what's, what's shown here on the slide is probably a really good example of the ideal streaming arrangement where you have an operating mine that produces a core metal. Uh, in this case, it uh, looks like it's represented by copper. Uh, but could easily be nickel or uh, or lead zinc or uh, or even silver from a gold mine. We focus on investing into these assets through streaming agreements, where we supply a, a, a portion, sometimes a very large portion of the capital up front to help get these mines built and up and running. And for that, we get a portion of whatever metal comes out of the mine. 
Now, because it's a, a share of whatever metal comes out of the mine, we do have an operating interest in those mines. Um, you know, the more successful those mines are, the more successful we are. And so we are a little bit different than I think uh, the, the typical, I mean, some, some would say this looks a lot like a royalty. We really do try and strive to be so much more than just that royalty guy or that royalty company. Uh, we are a streaming company and, and, and we, take po we take particular focus on, on partnering with, uh, with our, uh, our, all of our stakeholders. Of course, uh, you know, the, the primary one when it comes to our production being our mining partners. And we have this overlying belief, this overlying mantra in our company that the stronger, the more successful, uh, the more prosperous our partners are, that immediately flows through to us uh, because we get the benefits of all those uh, all those uh, um, uh, strengths in the industry. So we created this model 20 years ago. It's been uh, widely copied. There's a number of companies now that are doing streaming as a, as a source of, uh, of, of raising capital or, or supplying capital to the mining industry. Uh, we are obviously still focused, very focused, as the name implies, on precious metals. But most of our precious metals actually come from base metal operations. In fact, copper is very important to us. Just over 60% of our precious metals actually come as non-core byproduct from copper mines. And so, uh, so it, is, uh, it is, even though we're a precious metals focused company, we are very, very focused on really the entire broader spectrum of the, uh, of the resource industry and trying to find ways to help that going forward. So 20 years, um, uh, you know, as part of the founding team and have been with it, uh, just as a bit of background on myself, I'm a geological engineer. So we, you know, I think one of the other things that makes Wheaton very unique is our is our real heavy focus on technical excellence, uh, technical due diligence, and technical excellence, excellence, and uh, and you know, uh, trying to make sure that we can deliver as much as we can uh, to to that industry, but making our decisions based on sound technical uh, uh, due diligence and analysis, and uh, and really uh, heavy focus on that side. So, can we go to the next slide. Uh, as I mentioned, it's been 20 years. Uh, we've got 45 different assets. Uh, a heavy focus on on the Americas, but that's really because we spent the first 10 years focused on silver. Uh, and silver is a, a generally a byproduct of, of lead zinc operations, but a lot of it is found in the Americas. Both Mexico and Peru are very, very uh, 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 important to worldwide silver production, uh, the two strongest countries uh, in, in the Western world at the very least. Um, but about 10 years ago, we did broaden into the, uh, the, you know, the broader precious metal space and started investing into gold. And now we have some platinum and some palladium and some cobalt, actually, uh, which I call one of the more uh, uh, precious of the base metals. And so, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a good, strong asset base that we've allowed to, uh, to grow forward. And, uh, and as you can see, uh, uh, you know, in the last year, I've now uh, started investing into both Africa and in Australia. And so we truly are a global company. Uh, that is looking for ways to, again, help finance uh, the mines of tomorrow. Next slide. And when I talk about the mines of tomorrow, I really do believe that currently we in the resource industry have an incredible opportunity. Um, I think there's a recognition, a broader recognition by society over the last, uh, I would say, three, four, five years about the need for responsibly sourced resources uh, in terms of electrifying the world, what is what is required out there, and so, so I really do think that we in the in the in the resource industry uh, have an incredible opportunity to to truly step up and improve our our what we deliver to society, uh, improve how we do it, and uh, and I just think that this is the time to do it. The the drive towards. Uh, 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 you know, a, a more electrified world is going to require significant amounts of, of critical minerals, um, all the way from copper up to silver and, and even gold in, in, in high performance, uh, uh, areas, there's going to be a huge demand for that over time. And so, so again, this, this, um, you know, this, this opportunity, uh, is something that we all as a society, as an industry need to need to step into. And, and, you know, the key thing, I, I just think, is it's not getting easier to find mines. It's not getting easier to operate them, to build them. It's getting more and more challenging. And really it's because, uh, you know, of the, uh, of the, of, you know, first off a, a limited planet that we have. So we need to find better ways 
to maximize what we deliver out of our uh, of out of out of what we're actually uh, mining right now. And and I really do think that that's one of the things that's driving this this whole initiative here, this whole challenge. So, if we go to the next slide. So the future of mining challenge, um, you know, we work as partners with all of our mining partners. And so obviously it's one of our more important stakeholders, but you know, we've also got other stakeholders, our shareholders, of course, and also the communities that we operate in, but we can't forget that we're also part of a, a much bigger and broader industry, which itself has a responsibility of delivering responsibly sourced, uh, uh, minerals to this uh, and, and and resources to this society in an ever improving manner in terms of looking for ways to maximize the benefits of what we get with less and less footprint and so really that's what the future of mining challenge is about is that is that what we're trying to do is is uh, incentivize and drive creativity to try and drive uh, you know the new solutions that help us um, as a society uh, just do a better job, leave less of a footprint uh, with stronger, higher productivity and more rewards back to society for, you know, those resources that we all need and require in order to advance going forward. And so really excited about uh, um, this opportunity, this challenge. Uh, I'm really happy with the the level of interest that we've seen since we announced the uh, this feature of mining challenge. And uh, and I, I really look forward to seeing a lot of your ideas in terms of how we can do a better job in terms of what we do. It's the right thing to do. It's what we have to do as a society. And so uh, so please uh, put a lot of effort into this. And uh, I hope to be shaking your hand sometime early next year. Patrick. Thank you, Randy. And hello, everyone. Um, you know, as Randy already mentioned, this year, uh, the challenge is targeting solutions that can demonstrate a, a pathway to scope one and two emissions reductions. We are fairly liberal uh, with the way we view this, but this is coming back from a few years ago when we made a, a commitment to support our mining partners with their decarbonization and climate solutions uh, actions. And this year's challenge scope was defined with that in mind. Now, as I said, we are somewhat liberal to the way we view this. We are seeking solutions that could boost efficiencies related to anything from material handling, mineral extraction, mining methods, milling, mineral recovery, or even tailings. And we are targeting, uh, I think somebody already asked this on the chat line, uh, a TRL uh, of between five to seven. So we're looking to make a significant contribution to the technology's development. David will be going over the uh, evaluation criteria in some detail, but we are looking for solutions uh, to have a clear, actionable path to implementation and demonstrate a, a good understanding of the market demands and, and the end users' needs. Uh, next slide, please. One more. So obviously, we will be awarding a winner with a $1 million prize. Uh, that's uh, US dollars uh, that we hope will be used to further develop and advance the technology. Uh, we will be announcing uh, the winner at the uh, PDAC in Toronto in early March, uh, and we will be providing support for the winner if they shouldn't be living out there, not already in Toronto, to get to the conference and, and join us there. And really the hope is through the media and, and raising the profile of this, uh, that we are able to really uh, increase the awareness and the profile of the winning, the winning venture. So that's it for me, and David, if you wanna take over. Great, thanks, Patrick. Okay, next slide, please. So here is our timeline. Obviously, the uh, first box is uh, past history. Which the challenge is open, uh, and this is the webinar for the second box. The most important date for all of you right now is the submission window closing November 22nd, 1159 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, you need to get your submission in before then, and please don't try to submit at 11 p.m. Uh, you will encounter difficulties. Uh, whether it's with your computer updating or whatever it may be. Uh, been there, done that, is, is speaking from personal experience, get it in a couple of days beforehand. Uh, then we run through the evaluation. Uh, there will be the finalists, so there will be five finalists selected who will pitch to our evaluators and to Wheaton um, in order to select the final winner that will be announced at the PDAC conference. Uh, next slide, please.
So eligibility criteria, uh, key things. You must demonstrate greenhouse gas reduction potential. There was a question in the chat uh, about different uh, eligibilities as far as types of technology. If you are reducing the emissions from a mine, whether by reducing uh, and I will say the net emissions. So if you're reducing carbon dioxide through the operation of the mine, or if you are reducing the emissions through the production, those all qualify. Uh, but you need to demonstrate greenhouse gas reductions. It needs to be scalable on a global perspective. If there is one mine in the world where your technology works, but nowhere else, that's really not what we're looking for here. We're looking for something that is scalable across numerous mines. Uh, the evaluators will look at your technology and say, ask the question, can I see this being used right across the globe at lots of different mines you know, if it works only on copper, that's nice, but if it works on all base metals, well, that's better. Um, it needs to be a applicable to existing base metal and precious metals mining. If you've got something that's really cool for satellite, you know, mining or mining uh, asteroids, well, that's really cool. That's not what we're looking for today. Uh, we are looking for something that Wheaton streaming partners will be able to use. Uh, and as Patrick already mentioned, TRL 5 to 7 is the range that we're looking at. And I will ask you to take a close look at your technology. Uh, I have been there myself and frankly overestimated where my technology is at. Our evaluators will be taking a close look at where you're at. There are a number of online tools that allow you to uh, calculate where your TRL is. Please avail yourself of them. Make sure that you're not actually at TRL3. If you are, you're frankly wasting your own time in putting in an evaluate uh, an application, uh, not to mention the time of our judges and having to sift through it. But if you are TRL5 to 7, we would love to see you. Next slide, please. So how are we evaluating you? Uh, first off, 40% is on impact. This is the potential for the removal of greenhouse gases uh, and also improving the production in the base metal and precious metals mining. Uh, I remember, and this is on the health and safety front, uh, a somewhat sarcastic health and safety officer saying, well, the simplest way to improve your health and safety is to put a berm at the entrance to the mine and shut everybody out. Uh, yes, well, but that's not what we're looking for here, folks. Um, you need to reduce the emissions without hampering the production of the metals, which is the purpose of the mine. Innovation opportunity, 35%. Uh, we need to have strong technology here. It needs to be technically feasible. Uh, it needs to give a competitive advantage to uh, your technology versus uh, the existing incumbent technologies. And you need to be able to demonstrate that you can implement it. You've got to have a solid team in place with the capacity to actually execute on what you're talking about doing. Next slide, please. So this is just a quick uh, summary of how we're going to be evaluating. Uh, all the applications come in. We do a screening of them to identify a short list. Uh, we identify those finalists and they get a detailed review. Uh, they get an opportunity to pitch, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, to both the evaluators and Wheaton. Uh, and from that, we will select a winner. Next slide. So a few more tips on how to apply. One, make sure you fulfill the eligibility requirements. Two, don't wait until the deadline to submit your application. Uh, and don't make claims that haven't been backed up by evidence. Provide the data. Make it easy for the evaluators to give you a high score. Um, use clear language. Make sure that somebody else reads it. What you have written down may make perfect sense to you, but somebody else reading it may not understand it. Take the time to write it well in advance and have colleagues read it uh, and give you feedback. Make sure you explain, oh, sorry, make sure you explain the work done uh, to progress the technology today. Where, you know, where did you come from? How have you gotten to where you are today? And how are you gonna get from where you are today to a commercial technology? 
And if you have any questions uh, that we don't answer today, there's an email address at the bottom there, applications at futureofmining.ca. Please send in the questions and we will be happy to answer them. We, we want you to succeed. We want to see some really cool technologies. Uh, so please follow these uh, tips uh, to make sure that what you're uh, putting together really is the, uh, the top of class application. Um, and that's where we're moving in good time here. But those are the tips. So now we can move on to our Q&A. And I see we've got a number of open questions. Um, and I will pass it to Anissa. Anissa, if you could run through the questions or would you like me to talk to the ones that haven't been answered? Uh, uh, I can run through them. And then um, if you can provide an answer, David. Absolutely. So, would in-circuit carbon dioxide removal or CDR technologies be eligible or is it specifically for emissions reduction? Well, if you can, you, you know, the in-circuit is key here, uh, but if you've got a technology that is in the metallurgical circuit uh, that is allowing for uh, CDR, then the net emissions from the operation are reduced. So yes, that would be applicable. Perfect. Um, and then there was another question about novel direct air capture technology. So I think we covered that one as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think we have to be clear if that's direct air capture that's not at the mine site that's happening somewhere else. Well, no, that's not affecting the mine process. It's got to be the in circuit is a, a key part of that first question. Uh, yeah, thanks for clarifying. Um, so Matthew asked, process and or energy efficiency appears to be a clear focus. To what degree is this a priority or criteria? There are many GHG reduction solutions that will not contribute to efficiency or revenue outside of carbon credits, thus wondering if these solutions would be a lower priority or even considered. I think that Matthew, you're right there that the process or energy efficiency are get a priority because they win on two fronts. They win on CD carbon dioxide reduction or GHG reduction, as well as winning on the bottom line. But if you have a knock it out of the park uh, GHG reduction solution uh, that Although it doesn't contribute to efficiency, it doesn't make the efficiency worse. Absolutely apply. It will give you uh, reasonable consideration. Perfect. Are teams or consortium um, eligible? Yes, as long as you, uh, there's one organization that is applying, but if you are applying in uh, concert with others, uh, I'm fully supportive of that. I, I'm highly supportive of that because in my experience, as long as you have uh, a consortium agreement and it's clear how everybody's working together, and I will actually add that caveat. If you are applying as a consortium of folks who are loosely associated and yeah, my, my buddy Bob over there is gonna help me out, uh, that's not perhaps what we're looking for. But no, if you've got a written agreement and you're working together and you can demonstrate that you're working together, then multiple uh, angles of experience uh, all working on the same problem tends to produce a better result. So yes, definitely I would be supportive of that. All right. Um, are there any constraints on how the $1 million um, prize must be used? Is it paid in a lump sum? It's paid in a lump sum. To the best of my knowledge, there are no particular constraints, but Patrick, I will allow you to speak to that because it's you're providing the money. Yeah, no, it will be a lump sum. And the intent of this is for the, the money to go back into uh, the development uh, to further advance the uh, the solution. So really our intent isn't for this to be a prize so much as uh, uh, money to help you continue on your journey to advance your technology. You could almost consider this a, a non-dilutive investment. The next question, can metal extraction technologies also participate or only mining focused? 
if you are talking, this is a mining uh, focused uh, approach. If it's on the metallurgical circuit on the mine site, then yes. Uh, but if you're applicable to a smelter, to the best of my knowledge, at this stage, uh, Wheaton, you don't have any uh, streaming agreements with smelters. So uh, I don't think uh, that, yeah, it's, it, this is a mining challenge. So it's got to be on, uh, on a mine, mineral processing circuit on the, on the mine site. Great. Um, how about the elimination of cyanide from gold or silver? leaching and come up with an alternative. Can you demonstrate that there are GHG reductions from that? Uh, I'm not saying that eliminating cyanide is a bad idea. Uh, however, we have a specific focus on this particular challenge. So unless Randy, did you want to add something to that? Uh no, I, it was actually more the question before that uh, in terms of metal extraction. Uh, I I think one of the comments might have been you know solution in in process like solution extraction instead of mining. I think that might have been versus the uh, the smelting angle. And so uh, you know, to me again, if you can show that you can do that responsibly, and there's a a, a a reduction. It would be something that we'd be supportive. With respect to the, and I think your answer, David, was correct. With respect to uh, you know elimination of cyanide, there are technologies to remove that right now. It's a matter of does it does it actually reduce? Does it allow us to do it with less impact? And and that's one of the qualifying factors behind this uh, this first award. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's a question here. I'm hoping we can we can figure it out. Generally, there is a questionnaire to be filled, or in this case, we just should assume what to cover. Uh, there is an application. If you go to the uh, website, you can take a look at the and yeah, I trust that that I believe it's in the chat somewhere. But please, if uh, if you could add it in again for the. Uh, application there is an application form that you need to fill in uh, and you can answer those questions um you mentioned tailings can you explain how far the scope extends to this class of waste material well there are tailings on the mine site and so if you can uh, um, the production of tailings is part of the process of mining uh, and if you can uh, take advantage of the tailings to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the mine site, then that's of interest, uh, to put it simply. Great. Would software that uses ML slash AI to understand waste slash tailing stream and reduce GHG via reduction waste management and environmental impact qualify? Uh, if you are reducing GHGs on the mine site, then you qualify. We're not specifying what technology you have to use. So yes, uh, but just broadly speaking, all technologies that will reduce the GHG emissions at a mine site, they all qualify. We're currently working on copper extraction project from a low grade ore. In our case, for the application purpose, should we explain the project? Yes, absolutely. Please give all the context you can so that we understand uh, what you're working on uh, and understand its applicability uh, to the base metal mining sector. Any more insight into the evaluation criteria or scoring matrix? If you look at the application form, I believe it uh, breaks it down a little bit more. So I would recommend going on to the website uh, for the challenge uh, and uh, taking a look at the application form and that will help you there. Uh, next question. Are the application submissions protected by any confidentiality? Yes, excellent question. Uh, so all of our evaluators are required to sign a non-disclosure agreement to protect the applications. So your applications are held in complete confidence. Uh, and to be absolutely clear and explicit, uh, there is no IP transfer in this. The applications 
uh, even the winner, they 100% own their IP. There is no transfer of IP from anybody and everything is held in confidence. Yeah, great question. Um, if there is a carbon negative technology to extract uh, metals from mine tailings, but the mine tailings have to be taken off site, does that count? I'm asking in regards to the comments of the technology mm. being at the mine site. I guess it begs the question in my mind, why does it have to be taken off site? Uh, I would say for something like this, please go ahead and apply, uh, but give justification for why the tailings have to be taken off site. Uh, Can you explain the source of the GHG in the mining process? Depends on the mine site. Generally speaking, the majority of emissions come from either transportation on site, the combustion of uh, diesel for electricity generation in some mine sites, or uh, there's a uh, I mean, nice. Yeah, combustion of diesel is the biggest, then electricity use if your electricity uh, is not renewable. Uh, but yeah, please, uh, you'll need to understand exactly where the, those emissions come from. So you'll need to do your research into mine site emissions to, to understand how your technology applies. Um, does the technology have to be applicable to current Wheaton partners or can, or pardon me, could it be applicable to future? So this is quite explicit and I, my tip of my hat to Wheaton on this, they have explicitly said they are looking for technologies that are applicable to base metal mining and precious metal mining writ large. This is not explicitly targeting just their partners. Uh, but we would hope that one day we could bring it to our partners. That would be a nice, uh, a nice thing to have down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if it's if you've got technology that's applicable across the board, then it's going to be applicable to to Wheaton's uh, partners. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I would actually question if you've got a technology that works and yet it doesn't apply to any of Wheaton's partners, it's going to have a fair fairly restricted applicability, I suspect. So. Absolutely. Um, I actually meant to hit type answer for this next one, but I hit the wrong button. So we have to answer it live. How many companies do you anticipate qualifying for the challenge? Um, yeah, so there will be five uh, finalists. And then as far as qualifying, ultimately, there will be one winner. There will be five finalists. How many applicants will there be? We don't know. Uh, based on the number of people who are attending here, I'm guessing a lot. Um, next question. Do we have to have a site identified for installation? In our case, we provide a thermal energy storage solution to electrify process heating um, for the mining sector and reduce energy costs and carbon emissions by displacing natural gas but we do not have an end user yet. Okay, so the question is whether or not it will be applicable to base and precious metal mining. Uh, you don't have, you need to be able to identify that it would work at many mine sites, but you don't have to have a specific mine site where it is being used. I mean, because we're talking about TRL uh, five to seven, it's not yet in, uh, it's technologies that are not yet in commercial operation. So we don't expect you to be able to point to a particular mine site and say it's being used there. Um, are you looking, are you only looking for GHG reductions on the mine site or would altering processes on the site to reduce global GHG reductions be considered equally? If you can demonstrate the GHGs, that, that there's a GHG reduction from process changes at the mine site, then that would be considered. Um, during the DD process, would there be additional meetings with the evaluators for future clarification or further clarification? So the only 
uh, opportunity for further clarifications is for the shortlisted finalists uh, the, during the pitch session. Uh, that's actually a good question uh, because the implication there is do not leave anything to question. Make sure you include enough information in your application that all questions that you can foresee will be answered. Uh, otherwise, you may not make it to that short list. Um, next question. Between now and March, technologies will advance, which might mean it develops beyond TRL 7. How should we address this? That's a fair question. If you are at TRL 7 when you apply, then that's applicable. If you manage to advance yourself from TRL 7 to TRL 8 from between when you apply in November and March during the award, then we'll be celebrating that. Does the technology currently need to be deployed? Because we're looking at TRL 5 to 7, then no, we expect it isn't yet deployed. And last question, is there any additional advantage to reducing scope three emissions for reduction in purchased materials slash transportation? So we're primarily focused on scope one and two, uh, and that's that will be your primary, the primary evaluation criteria. If you, you know, as a tiebreaker, if you're reducing scope three as well as the scope one and two, then the, that uh, certainly won't hurt you. Uh, it's not the primary consideration, but yes, if you're reducing scope three as well as the scope one and two, that's not a bad thing. Great. That's yes. the end of our questions. Those are all our questions. That was a lot of questions, but I think we've managed to handle them fairly efficiently. Uh, We'll give a moment or two for any last minute questions if uh, people want to throw them in quickly, if they're currently typing and uh, haven't, uh, it hasn't yet shown up. David, I just want to add that uh, given the, the detail in the questions, I'm really excited about what we're going to see. So am I. There were implications about uh, uh, some technologies there that I'm quite intrigued about. So I, I, I'm looking forward to this. This is this is a very exciting challenge. I mean, Foresight, we've run 60 or 70 or more challenges in the past few years. Um, now I'm biased. I've done work in the mining sector, but I'm really excited about this one. It's, uh, oh, we've got a Got some more questions coming in here. Are you open to alternative power generator without emissions? Uh, yes, I would say so. If you are, that's part of your the scope two emissions on the site. Uh, so yes, if you can demonstrate, you just simply have to demonstrate uh, how many mine sites that is applicable for. So I, as a piece of advice, uh, review how many mine sites use remote power as opposed to being on the grid. Um, only want one winner. Yes, there will be only one winner. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid Wheaton is giving out $1 million, not multiple, and no, it's not going to be shared. So one winner. Well, I was just going to say, this is uh, expected to be an annual thing, so there will be other winners. And then, uh, and then the other thing I would add is that by bringing forward technology like this, we're all winners, so. And this is true. And I mean, if the evaluators see a really cool technology that it doesn't win, that doesn't mean that Wheaton's streaming partners might not still be interested in learning more about it. Uh, guidance on how to calculate change. Uh, I, the short answer is no, I'm not going to provide guidance on the GH, certainly not right on the call. Uh, there are standard tech, uh, techniques out there for uh, using a baseline and baseline assumptions, uh, and I would recommend you look look those up. Um, there, there is a greenhouse gas protocol that exists that uh, allows you to um, generate a baseline and use that baseline to compare against. Uh, yes, every mine is different. You need to compare against an average mine. Uh, are evaluators team part of Foresight or Wheaton? So um, there are no Foresight um, 
staff on the evaluation team. Uh, Wheaton will be part of the final evaluation, but it's primarily third party experts that we've brought in uh, from across the mining sector. Um, people with the uh, a range of experience in mining uh, globally so to make sure we've got uh, people who can truly evaluate what is the best technology. Uh, it, will you, if you can calculate your life cycle GHG and include that as part of your application, that will give further data to support your, uh, um, the numbers that you're claiming. So I would, yes, please do. Uh, that will stand you in good stead if you can demonstrate that uh, uh, your numbers are, are backed up. There was one more ch uh, question that ended up in the chat. It says diesel for material handling as well as generates GHG emissions on mine sites. Um, I'm not. That, I think that's an answer. That's uh, that's explaining where uh, some of the GHG oh, emissions sorry. come from. I'm sorry. I meant the if you're yeah, Matthew's. Um, Okay. Question about that. No. Okay. Are you open okay. to alternative power generation without any emission? I think that was answered that already. Was, that as well. was that ended up in the Q and A. Perfect. Okay. Well, once again, a big thank you to to Randy and Patrick. Uh, and to all the uh, folks on the call for showing an interest. Um, the one thing I will say, based on the number of folks on the call, uh, put your best foot forward uh, because we're going to have a lot of applicants. Mm -hmm. Thanks, David. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all.